Westworld Season 3 has now finished its 8 episode run and I've come to a conclusion on what I thought about the season. I've done videos on each individual episode, breaking it down and explaining what happened, but now I'm going to give you my overall thoughts and review. There will be spoilers for Westworld Season 3, so if you have not seen it, I'd advise to watch the season, then return for my analysis. Before I get into it, if you want to stay up to date with any of my future Westworld videos, along with theories and predictions for Westworld Season 4, then subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Also, if you enjoy it, remember to leave a like rating. Without further ado, let's get into my Westworld Season 3 free review. In the third season, which is titled The New World, Dolores has fled to a futuristic real world of polished glass and steel to enact her plan. This world is a grounded delight in a near-future metropolis that blends the visual aesthetic and tone of Blade Runner and her. Leaving her plaid shirts behind, Dolores sets on a path to help guide the humans in obtaining free will. She does so by hacking Rehoboam, a biblically named system which harvests human data, manipulating tech giants and dodging the bullets of assassins by hired rival corporations. We might be out of Westworld, but we soon learn that the world is just another theme park, where the stakes are higher and the wealthy and powerful can manipulate people, just as easily as they did to the hosts. Perhaps humans are just as predictable and programmable as machines as long as you know what makes them tick. I have explained and reviewed every individual episode this season, so if you want to check out any of these videos, there are multiple links in the description. With that out the way and the season briefly summarised, I'm going to start to break down my positives and negatives for season 3, along with my overall thoughts. Now, many people who watch this season might feel that Lisa Joy and Jonathan Nolan have hit the hard reset button on the series. For me, it feels like we were always coming to this point in the story. There were always questions in season 1 and 2 about the real world, and also, increasingly, the show has made it evident that humans will be just as central as the hosts are. We still get the essence of a rich, intricate narrative with decent world building, but then we also get a dialed down approach to the heavy dialogue. In particular, we get a bigger injection of slick car chases and action sequences. They've also trimmed the multiple narrative strands into a singular and present storyline. I personally think that this worked partially throughout the season. When they did attempt to tackle thought-provoking ideas on free will, in particular with the counter-arcs of Caleb and Serac, I did really get invested in why the world had become the way it was. On one side of the fence, Serac put Rehoboam in place to essentially delay humans from causing their own extinction, while at the same time he did control people against their free will. On the other hand, we find out that Caleb had made some bad choices and some good ones, but it's ultimately his capacity for choice that Dolores chose him for, and the fact that Serac is stopping people from having their own choices. These talking points were interesting to me because they stayed in line with the ideas of Season 1 and 2, but then we also saw it more from the human perspective. Where this falls apart is mainly through the pacing of the season. In some moments we tackle these characters in ideologically deep ways and what it means for them to have choices, but then in others we get over-exaggerated sequences like the genre car chase. It's entertaining and brilliantly filmed, but the constant shift in tone and pacing throughout the show's editing can at times challenge the more centralised path this season. Either way, I think they were able to successfully set up themes and a storyline which is compelling and keeps in line with the ideas of Westworld. Many people have stated that it's not Westworld anymore. I argue that it's more Westworld than ever. Even if I do prefer the story and the overall product of Season 1 and 2. And I'm not necessarily referring to the title of the show, but rather what the show stands for. 
The first season took place in a western theme park, which was all about AI and consciousness. In particular, the hosts were beginning to wake up from the loops that were created for them. In season 2, we continued to follow this awakening, and in turn we got decisions or choices that the hosts would make, leading into the real world or a virtual Eden. Season 3 stayed in line with the first two, but instead it gave us a reverse representation of the humans waking up from their loops, and the hope that surrounds the choices they will eventually make in setting up a new world. Essentially, Westworld Season 3 is a new coat of paint, just like Season 1 had a western filter. Ever since, we've seen many glimpses of new worlds, like Shogun World, The Raj, Military Training Park, Medieval World, War World, and even some of the simulated versions of them. This is all a backdrop to the story, and it only heightens the themes that are being discussed and presented. For instance, this season War World was the park of choice, and the reason they showed this was to remind us of the Nazis' control and also the essence of war which season 3 very much set up. Next season it looks like we might be seeing Charlotte Hale trying to wipe out humanity, whereas Maeve, Caleb and possibly Bernard have chosen to see the beauty and will ultimately try and save it. They've set up opposing sides for a new battle and one which weirdly reflects wars of the past. They did the same with Shogun World in Season 2, making that the backdrop to Maeve's growing sympathy for protecting life and her alternative choices. So overall, my positives for this season were that they were able to convincingly introduce us to this new world, retaining the themes and storylines which make Westworld so compelling, while also infusing new characters and a human perspective which really expands the narrative well from where we left off in Season 2. When it comes down to the negatives for this season, they mainly focus on pacing. I personally would have liked to have seen more episodes to really flesh out some of these ideas. I found that the final two episodes suffered from this limited exploration, and the reveals and particular character moments could have resonated greater with this development. In particular, I was satisfied with Maeve and Bernard's ending, but it took an entire season for me to really enjoy where they were heading as characters. Maeve's character arc was one that felt like it was used as an opposing force to Dolores, and they didn't really have any heightened opposition that they could fill this gap with. Also, Bernard didn't really come of use until the final episode, when we find out that he had the key all along. Again, I do like the way they ended their character paths this season, but really it left me more excited to see where they go in season 4. I personally wish we could have had more moments with these characters earlier on to really make their paths feel remembered. Turning to the man in black, again, I really enjoyed the direction his character went, especially with the episode in the institution, which really got inside the head of that character. It's characters like William and Dolores, which I'm incredibly excited to see play out in the future of the show. But we got a lot happening so quickly, and things being set up for season 4, that again, some episodes may become forgettable to me. One of the things I loved about Season 1 and 2 was the high level of rewatchability it presented. Season 2 seems to get better every time I watch it, and certain scenes and pieces of editing become less confusing than the first time round. This season there were a handful of episodes which I really enjoyed, in particular The Mother of Exiles, Decoherence, The Absence of Field, and Passe Domine. These all served their purpose and they kept the story very focused and driven towards one character or story point. The Mother of Exiles was possibly my favourite because it took all the development from episode 1 to 3 and brought it all together in spectacular fashion, while also giving a shocking reveal with Dolores and her copies. Every character felt connected to the title, which was a reference to freedom and the overall trapped nature that the humans are in relation to how the hosts once were. 
But then on the opposite side of things, episode 2 and 7 felt very misjointed at times. Episode 2 didn't really take us anywhere apart from the final scene which was interesting between Maeve and Serac. While episode 7 gave us a confrontation between Dolores and Maeve which just felt weak and not fleshed out properly. Regardless of these few negatives, I am excited for season 4 and I will definitely rewatch season 3 to see if these individual episodes grow on me. With all that said, I'm giving Westworld season 3 a rating of 4 stars. Overall, I've really enjoyed the themes and the story that they have explored over the 8 episodes, through deep discussions on whether humans really do have free will. It's something the show has always been leading towards and I want to see how they tackle the finale events going forward. Although the ending of this season felt like a first chapter of the real story which we are now entering into come season 4, at the same time I think this season was necessary to show how we move into this new world. They executed the ending in a way that has me excited because it seems they are setting up a real world version of Westworld. It's as if the first few seasons have prepared us for the story we are about to embark on. Alongside all of this build up, the season really did solidify how much I love the production that goes into this show. From Ramin's pulsating score with covers of The Weeknd's Wicked Games, to the grand cinematography and visual effects, it's clear that they are trying to construct a world and elevate what we know about Westworld. It really underlines that the show is built on a science fiction backbone which allows the creators to keep pushing us into unknown territory, while at the same time preserving what we love about the series. A final point to mention is the performances, which like previous seasons help us to really immerse ourselves in the characters we watch. In my opinion, the standouts for season 3 were Evan Rachel Wood, Tessa Thompson and Ed Harris. Again, although I would love to have seen more of Hale and William come the finale, the performances we did get in numerous episodes had me fully on board with their character arcs going forward. They all express the nature of grey characters to perfection, ones which aren't fully good or bad, but rather ones which have to make difficult choices because of the world around them. Evan's portrayal of Dolores was one that was able to bring all of these different emotions this season, from sorrow all the way to struggle and fearlessness. It's these interesting perspectives which leave a wanting for more, and with multiple seasons left I feel like there are plenty of directions they can go in. Overall I'm really looking forward to see where this goes and what Westworld will bring us over the next few seasons. Let me know down below what you thought of Westworld Season 3 and tell me what your predictions are for Season 4. For future Westworld coverage along with videos on Season 4 then subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Again if you enjoyed this video remember to give it a like rating. I will be uploading videos now and again on particular Westworld topics but obviously there's going to be a long wait until Season 4. So feel free to comment ideas down below and also recommend shows and movies that you would like to see me cover. But anyway, let me know what you thought of Westworld Season 3 in the comment section. I hope you guys enjoyed it, I've been Cortex and as always, make some noise.